What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize Hellblade 2 for the best possible performance and, of course, general gameplay experience. Do note this guide does contain footage from just after the first little half an hour intro, so if you're worried about spoilers, just keep that in mind. Anyways, jumping straight into it, this is Hellblade 2. This is sort of the cinematic aspect ratio that it plays pretty much the whole game throughout. And of course, I'm just in the second area here right after the first half an hour intro. Obviously, there's not too much to see here, but performance is pretty consistent with a 3080 Ti at 2K with everything default, which is probably maxed out. I'm sitting at a solid 30 to 35 FPS pretty much the whole way through. It is playable, and as it is kind of a controller-centric game, that usually doesn't matter too much. There's no Twitch shooter reaction requirements, so as long as the game runs smoothly, you're probably going to be just fine. That being said, if you need extra performance, especially on lower powered systems, this guide should help you. So, pausing the game and heading into settings, followed by graphics, we'll start at the very top with display. First of all, resolution should match your display. I have a 2K display, so that's what I've got set here. Upscaler will return to in just a bit, but for now, I'll set it to TSR, so we're playing at native resolution. There's no AI upscaling magic going on here. I would also want to turn off dynamic resolution just so that everything stays at native resolution to get solid numbers from what comes next. Under general, HDR is entirely your preference and should have almost no effect on performance. Vertical sync should definitely be off unless you're getting screen tearing, and we'll come back to enable this later if that's a thing. NVIDIA Reflex you only have if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, and you should most likely have this turned on. Otherwise, if you're CPU bottlenecked, set this to on plus boost. Finally, variable rate shading is usually good to have on on most graphics cards. You won't see any performance loss. Things should just be a bit more consistent, if not smoother and slightly better FPS with this turned on. So I'd recommend keeping it on unless for some reason your system is incompatible with it. Then at the very bottom, we get to general quality settings that we'll click through in just a moment. So it seems like the game is in the high preset and with everything set to completely native, I'm getting a solid 33 FPS. If we go ahead and drop it to medium, we're now at a solid 41 and finally low, a solid 51 frames. This of course means that on most systems, you're probably going to be struggling with performance in this game pretty much no matter what. As you can see on low, I'm using a solid 6 gigs of VRAM, medium 6.2 and high a solid 7.1. This game is relatively demanding. However, let's run through some of the quality settings just so we know what exactly we can mess around with. I'll start on low and work my way up as reaching a solid 60 is difficult in this game without something like upscaling. Should we choose to enable upscaling using something like FSR? R3, which is fantastic to see on quality, we're now getting a solid 46-ish FPS, which is a good solid improvement. And of course, as it's rendering the game in a lesser resolution, it's using slightly less VRAM, so I'm currently at 6.2, whereas native takes us up to 7-ish. If we were to lower the resolution further and upscale harder, such as using balanced, it should use even less VRAM, and of course give us even better performance. On balanced, we're getting 52, and that's pretty much as low as I would go. Performance takes us up to 55. But of course, visual fidelity really struggles here. Ultimately, what you're going to want to do is optimize for the best possible performance, then add upscaling later on. But for now, at least you sort of have an idea of what kind of performance you can expect. Changing it back to native and scrolling down to the graphics options, what here has the biggest effect on performance? Let's go ahead and start on low and work our way back up. So from 51 frames, changing anti-aliasing from low to high has almost no effect here. But of course, the only effect will be visual, and if you're using any kind of upscaling, anti-aliasing goes away pretty much anyway, as that's done automatically through the whole upscaling process. For this reason, I'd probably leave it on low, and of course, use upscaling in just a moment. Post-processing takes us from 51 to still 50. Obviously, this is mainly going to have an impact in certain cutscenes and things like that, where there's different things happening to your screen, vignetting where the corners get darker, different blurring, etc. For now, at least, this shouldn't have a huge impact throughout general gameplay, and of course, it should have a minimal impact where it is applied in cutscenes and things like that. If you prefer a crispier looking game and you've got a solid at least 30 or 40 frames, you could probably leave this on high and forget about it. If you're experiencing serious frame drops in cutscenes, it could be due to post-processing, but more than likely, it's probably got to do with effect quality down here, which is the next option. We have standard and high. 
from a solid 51 or 50 FPS on standard, we can raise it up too high, and this has almost no effect here, maybe one or two frames, as there's only a little bit of smoke, a couple of embers and things like that. But in certain scenes, especially with tons of rain like the intro, this is probably going to have a much bigger impact on performance. For that reason, I'd probably leave it on standard pretty much always, as it'll save you a couple hundred megs of VRAM, and on top of that, give you more stable, consistent performance throughout the whole experience. Shadow quality, while this usually wouldn't be too much of an issue in most games, this of course is a more cinematic, exploring and feeling the world kind of game. There's not too many shadows here, and you can already see that changing from low to high has dropped us around three or four frames, which is, I don't know, six to eight percent. That's a pretty huge drop from low to high. So of course, I'd really be leaving this on low pretty much all the time. Of course, if you have a much more powerful system, this is one of the options I would recommend raising, as it'll just improve the experience that much more. Reflection quality, obviously there's not too many reflections here. Raising it from low to high, there's about two FPS difference, which is maybe three to four percent. Obviously, there's not a ton of reflections here, and it should be screen space reflections, so they should be relatively cheap. You'll mostly see this on water and things like that, and the performance impact should be around the same two to three percent. For me though, I'll be leaving it on low as I'm trying to grab every bit of extra performance that I can and the game does really look fantastic on whatever you choose. Global illumination from low at 51 to high at 41 42 there's a massive impact of 15 to 20 percent performance here which is something seriously big especially if you don't have a lot of performance to play around with and of course video memory seems to have raised by about a gigabyte or so that is massive changing it between low and high however there's almost no impact on visual fidelity except for maybe i don't know the shadow here it's slightly brighter with it set to high and on low there's a much more noticeable shadow here medium however only takes us maybe one or two fps down with barely any impact on vram and there doesn't actually seem to be a difference between these high however does absolutely tank your frames for this reason medium is as high as i would go in pretty much any setup otherwise low if you're really clawing for every bit of fps i'll leave it on medium here volumetrics once again mostly has to do with water and hair and things like that things that flow around from low at 50 fps too high we're at 43 so that's one a 10 12 percent decrease in performance obviously once again i'd recommend leaving this to a much lower option but at least it doesn't have a huge impact on vram if we set it to medium we only drop about 102 frames which is two or three percent obviously not too much lost here medium is probably as high as i would go with volumetrics once more then texture quality this completely has to do with how much of vram you have available in your system if you have extra vram lying around like i do you can comfortably raise this all the way and you should see practically no impact on performance other than when textures are loading in so from low to high there should be a change in vram usage there's not too much change here but you can see a great improvement in how things look in the distance and of course textures up close the quality should just be infinitely better so if you have extra vram raise this as high as possible for a good improvement in visual quality with a minimal impact on performance then view distance on low 48 fps medium the same high still the same there's nothing really popping in or out here but i assume it would have to do with higher quality models being loaded at a closer distance so if you experience weird pop in and you're noticing things loading into higher resolutions medium is probably what you want to push for here at least though there's not too much of an impact on performance at least in this scene then finally foliage detail is obviously not too much around me from 48 we drop to 46 by raising it up to high but you can see just how much grass and things like that is added to the scene it feels a lot more alive with it set to high and low there's only a couple of patches here and there medium has a pretty big difference from low and high sort of shifts the grass around it's a little bit weird how this grass is generated it seems but i assume there's just a slider of how much vegetation there is being raised whenever we raise the detail here obviously in this current scene and the first intro scene there's not too much foliage to be seen but where it is having it set to higher options with a minimal impact on performance is probably going to add to your general gameplay experience and immersion in a more alive world for that reason i'd probably leave this on medium if not high especially if you have extra performance on the table so now that we've run through pretty much everything these are my options and of course if we we go back to say the low preset we don't really gain any extra performance we've actually improved how the game looks and we stayed pretty much exactly where we are with a maybe 102 percent fps difference which is massive very great improvement in how the game looks obviously this is a more cinematic experience and something you'd probably want to keep your game focused on you're going to want better quality rather than better frames if you're sitting at around 40 or 50 that's more than good enough especially if you're
if you're not using any kind of upscaling. Speaking of, let's go ahead and activate upscaling just to see what kind of performance we can get. Now that we've made the game look better than low settings and we've improved our performance, let's see just how much we can get out of the game. Scrolling all the way up to upscaling, the upscaling I would recommend would probably be FSR 3, pretty much in all cases, even with NVIDIA graphics cards. Choose quality, just so we have the least amount of weird visual artifacts. And if we go ahead and preview this, you'll see just how the game looks. So this is quality, this is native anti-aliasing, where it doesn't really do too much, except for smooth out aliased corners and things like that, 45-ish FPS using native AA, and almost exactly 60 with quality, this is probably where I would leave the game in my case. The lowest I would go with any upscaler is probably balanced. This pushes us up to 65-ish, which is also pretty good, but that does mean that this game is super demanding to say the least. You may not have the ability to leave this on the higher quality options, you may have everything on low already, and you need to use upscaling to get a playable frame rate. this game is pretty demanding. For me though, I'll leave it on quality as a solid 60 FPS is more than good enough. Keep in mind, I am running at 2K, if you drop this down to 1080p for example, and then use upscaling on top of that, performance should raise pretty much through the roof. So for example, 1080p, we jumped all the way up to almost 70 FPS here, and the game still looks pretty good. But as I have a 2K display, I definitely benefit from playing at 2K, which only has a small performance difference in my case. Finally, sharpness is something I'd recommend raising pretty much no matter what upscaler you're using, though do keep in mind you should keep this on the much lower end rather than the higher end. Though it's also fantastic that we can preview changes by hitting space on any of these options to play around with them and get a live view in game. This is fantastic. Usually for FSR or DLSS, you'll want to keep it somewhere below 30%. Somewhere around 20 here is probably more than good enough and should make the game feel a lot more crisp, especially when you go to the lower quality upscaling options such as balanced or even performance. Anyways, I'll leave it somewhere around here I think. If we change to DLSS, once again we can choose quality performance here, and we have automatic sharpness, but we can turn it off to get a manual slider once more. On quality DLSS, I'm getting a solid 60 frames, which looks almost exactly the same as FSR. The one thing this game is missing seems to be frame generation, and this game could really benefit from FSR frame generation, DLSS, or anything else like that. In another video, I've covered lossless scaling to get frame generation in pretty much any game, and this game is no different. If I change to FSR 3 on quality and apply everything, we're getting a solid, let's see, 53, 55 ish and the game feels relatively responsive. Things are pretty good. However, if we were to use something like lossless scaling to pretty much double our FPS by adding frame generation to any game, our performance should go through the roof. So enabling lossless scaling frame generation and choosing our game, turning off my overlay, you can see in the top left, in white text, I'm getting a solid 1890-ish FPS, which is really good. If we look around, the game is noticeably smoother, however, frame pacing seems to be suffering a little bit. There isn't an option to cap FPS in this game, I don't think. You'll need to use a third-party tool, such as River Tuner, to cap your FPS to something super consistent, so slightly lower than what you're getting. If you're getting 56, cap it to 50, for example, and then use something like lossless scaling, otherwise frame pacing just feels a little bit off, and it'll feel noticeably stuttery. That's at least my case, and if you choose to use something, third parties add frame generation after the fact, keep that in mind. Anyways, a solid 50 is more than good enough, especially for a title that you're going to be playing probably with the controller anyways. This feels relatively good, even if we are just at 50, although the sensitivity is a little bit high. I'll definitely be adjusting that. For the most part, this game does look fantastic, but you will need a good setup in order to run it pretty much at all, even all the way down on low. That's really it for the super quick guide. Hopefully this video helped you. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.